In this integral, I'm going to use integration by parts. And I'm going to start out by gathering what I need to integrate e to the negative x squared. And what I need there is a negative 2x out in front of it to account for the chain rule. So my first step is like this. I'll go integral. And I'm going to take one of those x's and use them to prep for the chain rule on that piece. But I need a negative 2x. So I'm going to multiply that negative 2 inside the integral and a negative 1 half outside to compensate for it. And now I'm ready to use integration by parts. Now, the point of this, setting it up this way, is that the x squared piece, that will get simpler if I differentiate. The other piece I've set up to have a guessable antiderivative, so that that's going to be my dv. Again, as usual, we are choosing our u so that it gets simpler when we differentiate, and then our dv so that hopefully it's not too hard to guess the antiderivative. So writing down my substitution explicitly, I'm going to say let u equal x squared, and that means that du is 2x dx. Let dv equal negative 2x e to the negative x squared, and that means v is just e to the negative x squared. If you have any doubts about that, all you do is just mentally differentiate this thing and make sure you get what I started with. When I differentiate e to the negative x squared, I get e to the negative x squared multiplied by the derivative of negative x squared, which is negative 2x, so that's why this works. Now applying the integration by parts formula, my 1 half is a spectator out in front, and I start with a uv, so that's an x squared e to the negative x squared minus the integral of v du. So that gives me a 2x e to the negative x squared dx. Now I've already basically done this integral once, and what I need inside to account for the chain rule perfectly is a minus sign. So I'm going to multiply by negative 1 in front and, so inside the integral and outside the integral to compensate for it. Now that integral has a guessable antiderivative. That's going to give me an e to the negative x squared. And then just cleaning things up a little bit, I could pull the e to the negative x squared out in front. And I get negative 1 half e to the negative x squared times the quantity x squared plus 1. And we're done.